Hi everyone, it's Carissa at Sprinkled with Glitter, and I am here, I have this stamp set. It's from the Penny Arcade Studio Calico July Kit, and I'm starting out with the high sentiment from that stamp set. You'll see more of this kit as I go on because this project was made using that Penny Arcade Kit. I'm inking this high sentiment up in Versamark Black Onyx ink, and I stamped it down and I slid around the paper. <laughs> So I had to re-ink it. Um, sometimes in stamping you need mulligans, just like I take them all the time when I golf. So I took a mulligan here and got a image that I was really pleased with. And then I just used a baby wipe to clean off my stamp and set that aside. Now because this is a pigment ink, I went ahead and hit it with a heat tool to make sure that it was nice and dry before I took this one and three quarter inch circle punch and punched it out. And that just assured that I didn't smear that ink Pigment ink does take longer than a dye ink to dry, and so I use, I use the heat tool to speed that process along. Now I decided I wanted a gold backdrop for this high sentiment, so I'm making some gold paper. I'm just taking my Versamark ink pad and squishing it onto the paper, and then I'm using, and I'm just putting some gold embossing powder all over. Now I did this in the kookiest way to begin with. I should have used the spoon to begin with. I was trying to save time, and I guess my mom was right. She used to call me Amelia Bedelia all the time, but I made a huge mess out of something that could have been so simple. So just use your spoon, and then I heat set that embossing powder, and you can see that it makes a really nice shiny gold paper there. Now these wood veneer stars come in the Penny Arcade kit, and I wanted them to be gold as well. So I'm just, with a pair of tweezers, smushing those into the Versamark ink pad, and then I'm dunking it into the gold embossing powder and heat setting it with my heat tool. You want to use a pair of tweezers for this so you don't burn yourself. And if you want it a thicker layer of the embossing powder, you can actually dunk it in while it's still um, tacky and then put a whole nother layer. So to mat this sentiment, I'm just using a circle die here. These are the nesting circles from Lifestyle Crafts. And I'm going to put that on my Genius Platform blade side up and then my paper and then my A cutting mat and just crank that through. And that's just going to die cut that circle for me so that, that that'll mount nicely on that sentiment there. So I wanted to use a piece of textured cardstock. So I'm cutting this down to three and three quarters by five. And this is just going to be kind of the card front that I'm using here. I'll mount all of this to a card base eventually. And I really wanted to use this amazing ribbon that comes in the kit. I just love this. But I'm going to have it kind of peek off the edge of that card front. So I'm just trimming it down. And then I'm going to fold it in half and trim it at an angle so I get a nice V end to it or a ribbon end. And because it's going to be kind of a loose edge, and it's not going to be tucked behind the cardstock. I just took a lighter and just kind of quickly fuse those ends. Just really quickly, you want to touch that flame. And please be careful if you're going to try this at home. Don't burn yourself. Um, but that just kind of seals off the end of that ribbon and keeps it from fraying. I used the red doily that's in the kit, and I mounted that kind of overhanging that card front. And then I'll just trim off the excess. Now, you could use this excess on another card. I think I threw mine away. <laughs> Um, so now it's time to mount that sentiment onto the gold piece, and I'm just using some foam adhesive to pop those two circles together and just give it a little bit more dimension. And then I'm going to add the ribbon to the front of this card front. And so this is kind of the idea that I want here. I'm just kind of trying this out before I go for it completely. And I think I like that. So I'm going to take some of this. I believe it's about a half inch wide Be Creative tape. And I'm just going to put it on the back of my ribbon. And I decided that wasn't quite long enough. So I needed another, another strip on that. So I'll remove the backing and then add that other strip just to make the tape longer because I didn't get it long enough in the first place. So I could have... Let's be honest, I could have sewed this, but I couldn't remember how to thread my bobbin. So <laughs> I'm stuck with adhesive today. So I'm just putting that on, the tail kind of hangs off, and then I'm just scrunching it, kind of pleating it into place. And once I get it all situated the way I like, I can really just burnish it down and push it down. 
And then I'll tr turn over to the back of this and I'm gonna leave a little extra because I wanna loop this around to give it a nice finished edge. So instead of cutting it off at the card edge, I'm going to leave that edge. I'll put another piece of this Be Creative tape on the back of the card front and then loop that ribbon around. And that'll just give me a nice clean finished edge rather than a fraying ribbon. I didn't wanna take a uh, flame to this card front. Call me crazy, but I didn't want to do that. Didn't want to fire in the craft room. So now it's time to adhere these little stars on, and I could not find my quick sticks to save the life of me, so I'm just picking these up with my fingers and using this multi-medium matte finish by, by Claudine Helmuth to adhere these down. And because that doily was kind of poking up there, I just put a little behind there and uh, pushed the doily down as well. So once I got all of those stars adhered the way I wanted them, I thought I would try to make these pleats sit down a little bit more. So I took more of that matte medium here and put it behind the pleats. Now, this didn't end up working, but I put a block over it to try to hold those into place. I ended up using a piece of that Be Creative tape in the end to kind of hold that one pleat down because it was sticking up rather high. And while that was drying, and it didn't work, but while it was drying, <laughs> I added um, foam adhesive to the back of my sentiment piece, and then I decided I wanted to mount this. I'm flipping through the Penny Arcade 6x6 pad that came with the kit and just trying to figure out what pattern paper I thought I wanted to use from this, and I ended up with this graffiti piece. Now, I'm going to cut this to about a quarter inch larger than the card front that I already have. And then I decided that I might want some more of this paper because I was kind of running out. So I'm cutting out the center of this because you're never going to see it behind the card front. So I'm just taking about a half inch in and then pushing the blade down and going about a half inch away from the edge. And basically this is just going to make a frame out of that paper and I'm not being exact because I don't really care what it looks like. I just wanted the extra paper. <laughs> which I don't ever do this, but I love this paper so much and I was already running out, so I just thought I would make the most of it. So you'll see me once I get all four of those edges cut out. Here I have this frame and this card front can mount to this pattern paper and then I still have the middle part that I can use on another card project. So I'm just gonna use a little tape runner adhesive to adhere the card front to the pattern paper frame that I created and I'll get that all pressed down. I can add my sentiment on here, and I used a double layer of foam adhesive for the sentiment, and I just popped it onto the front of the card. And then this whole card front went on to an A2 card base here, and that finishes off my card project for today. I love the ribbon in this kit. I love, I love, I love it. Did I say I love that ribbon? So here's a look again at the finished card project. As always, you can get links to the products used in this project in the description at YouTube, as well as over at my blog at sprinkledwithglitter.com, where you can see more projects using the Penny Arcade kit. Thanks for stopping by. I hope you have a fabulous day.